reason to sing, a reason to worship. We serve a risen King, the one true God. Sing with me. Rejoice, our Savior is alive. Rejoice, the death has been denied. Rejoice, His majesty is there. Let our praises fill the air as we He bled and died and now forever reigns And he holds the world His arms are open wide That we may live the have not sanctified Rejoice Behold the church The ones who turn to him the man, the child, who have turned away from sin. And we sing to him, for he has called us home. And we declare that you alone are Lord. We are joy. Good evening, everybody. If you're out in the lobby, please make your way inside. We are ready to start. Oh, I guess I get All right, my name is Deb, and I want to welcome you to the vineyard. If you are visiting us for the first time, we want to welcome you with a special gift. On our back table or at the connection counter outside the back doors, you will find a small gift bag that has some information about the vineyard and a gift for you. Please help yourself to one if you haven't been given one already. 
If at any point during the evening you have questions, please feel free to seek out our welcome team members who greeted you as you came in tonight. Our greeters tonight are Pat and Cindy, and they will do their best to answer your questions. Let's take a moment and go over a few announcements. You will notice in your bulletin there is a giving envelope for any financial gifts you wish to make. Those can be placed in the envelope and put in the basket on the back table. There is also a connection card, which we will get to in a moment. Let me call your attention to the left side of your bulletin. Spring fun groups. These spring fun groups start tomorrow, Monday, May 3rd. Check out the table in the back of the sanctuary for details and sign-ups for all the groups. Here's a brief rundown of the groups that will kick off. On Monday, we have a morning stroll through Hills Creek. That takes place at 9.30 a.m. And Monday evening at 6.30, we have outdoor yard games and bonfire. On Tuesday, we have at 6 p.m., there's trail hiking that is open to all ages that will take place at Hills Creek. And there's also at 6.30, ice cream and play at the park. On Wednesday at 6 p.m., there's bonfire and jam session. Thursday at 6.30 is silent reading together. Friday at 6 p.m. is lights, camera, action, movie night. And on Saturday or Sunday at various times, we have the pedal, paddle, pant, which is biking, kayaking, or hiking. And usually only one of those will be going on per day. And then lastly, on Sunday at 11 a.m., we have Learn to Crochet. So you can sign up in the back on the papers, or you can also sign up on your connection card or at www.wellsboroughvineyard.org slash connection groups. Vineyard Church of Wellsboro Women's Prayer Evening. Vineyard ladies, you're invited to Get Real with God this Saturday, May 8th at 6 p.m. at our upcoming Women's Prayer Night. Join together with other women in the vineyard to repent, expand, appeal, and listen. In other words, get real with God. For more information, talk to Jody Spencer or Shannon Weatherford. There are flyers on the back table. Light refreshments will be served, and you can sign up on your connection card or email the church office at contact at wellsboroughvineyard.org. Circuit Kids Teachers Binders. If you are a Circuit Kids teacher for the reboot or upgrade class, don't forget to pick up your binder that will be in the back. An afternoon at the movies outreach. Do you have family or friends that don't have a church home but could benefit from some connection with the vineyard community? If so, invite them to an afternoon at the movies on Saturday, May 15th at 1 p.m. at the Victoria Theater in Blossburg. We will be holding a family movie day. This free event will inclu include a free popcorn and drink while we watch the newly released Tom and Jerry the movie. Make plans to attend with a guest. If you would like to help with the coordination of this event, please let Brett know. Volunteer recognition, picnic, and service. Throughout the month of May, we will be recognizing all our vineyard volunteers with a special appreciation gift. As part of this recognition, we will have an outdoor picnic and service at Ives Run Park, the Lakeside Pavilion, on Sunday, May 30th, time to be determined. We will have a brief worship service followed by a meal and fellowship. Let us know you will be coming on your connection card. And lastly, save the date, Vineyard Camping Weekend. The Vineyard Camping Weekend has been scheduled for August 13th to the 15th at Stony Fort Creek Campground. If you would like to reserve a site or a cabin, please contact the church office or put it on your connection card. We have several sites and a few cabins reserved. Additional details to follow in June. At this time, grab your connection card. This card is the way we stay connected as a church body. If you are visiting us tonight, please take a moment and complete the front side, giving us as much information as you feel comfortable giving. Regular attenders, you can just give us your name and any updated information. On the back of the card is a place for prayer requests, praise reports, and event signups. For those tech-savvy individuals, you can scan the QR code on the bottom right-hand side of the bulletin and complete the card electronically. We're going to put 60 seconds on the clock while you fill out your connection card. <laughs> card can be put on the back table. <laughs> if you are joining us in the hall tonight, you will find several links in the comments section of this video. The first link is to our
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Vineyard. Uh, my name is John. I'm one of the worship leaders here. And we're, we always start every service by uh, worshiping together. So we will invite you to stand with us if you're able. And we're just going to praise. I'm just going to pray before we start. Lord, we thank you for the chance to come into your presence, to, to, to learn more about you, and to just uh, follow you together in this church. Lord, we just worship you tonight, and we give this time to you. In Jesus' name.
really old one. <laughs> if you know it, help us out. Let's shout to the Lord. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you all of my days. I want to of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship. bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to the promise I have. And nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Let us sing power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hand. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Yes, Lord, we thank you for the promise we have in you. Thank you for this chance to come together and worship you tonight. We give this night to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
You may have a seat. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? I'm doing great, thanks. It's May. May is here, and what a beautiful, sunny May it is today, anyway. And as part of May, um, if you have missed the posts or you... Um, missed the donuts outside the sanctuary. May we are recognizing all the many number of volunteers um, here at the vineyard that serve week after week, month after month, year after year, so that we uh, can do what we do. And so um, we are excited to, throughout the month of May, we're going to be recognizing all of our different ministry team members, um, small group leaders, SOCOM leaders, everyone that does something to make the vineyard what it is. And so um, we have a, a little gift. <laughs> that was terrible. Are we good now? Oh, now I have nothing. Oh, oh, I'm back on. Whoa, you should do that more often. <laughs> well, I just put batteries in this. So. All right, want to try it? No. Test one, two, three. Pa uh, do it again, Jess. Mute it again. I'm going to take the batteries out and put back in. Okay, try it. Test, test. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I think we got it. Whew, that was exciting. Yay! Volunteers like our sound people that just figure out. And if they can't, just mute me. So, so anyway, all week we are going, or all month we are going to just recognize uh, volunteers. We have a, a appreciation gift that we're going to give out um, all month long. We'll have donuts out there because we do not know what we do without you. <laughs> I didn't come up with that. So um, what we're going to do tonight, I, I'm going to introduce a couple of uh, the team leaders who are gonna, going to then introduce the, the team members of the team that they lead. Um, you can just stand, if you would just stand when your name's called, um, and then Carolyn and I will kind of run the gifts to you. That will make sure that we don't have a bunch of people up here and, and chaos. So, <laughs> so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and invite Jesse Gotchel uh, to come up for up. Jesse is our team leader for our security team. Um, so he kind of, oh, a couple years ago, a couple years ago, um, he, he kind of came and said, hey, we, we really should think about adding some security to the facility um, and kind of took the lead and ran with that. And so he put the team together, he figured out all the processes, and he is going to um, tell us who's on that team. Okay, we have uh, Sam Warren. He's serving tonight. He may not stand up. Yeah, okay. he is already standing. Uh, Jerry G., Again, uh, another one serving. He's at the back door. Uh, oh, Bill back. Colton, uh, Matt Hazelton, John Weatherford, John Osgood. D John, if you would remain standing. Dan Frank, 
Dave Crick, Jeff Poole, and Dan Cooper. Thank you, thank you, Jesse. And next up, we are going to, I'm going to invite uh, Shelby, Shelby Gotchel up. And Shelby is our, our team. Oh my, that is going to drive me nuts. Shelby is our team leader for the welcome team, which we'll be doing in a, a, another week. But she's also been, um, for several years, kind of managing the projection team. And so she is going to be uh, announcing those members. Okay, so we have Jenna Miller. Again, if you just stand, they'll bring you your gift, please. Thank you. Landon Kennedy, uh, Riley Kennedy, and myself. <laughs> and then we are going to bring up uh, Dan Kreis. Dan has been the unofficial leader of the sound team um, for quite some time. He kind of has worked through and continues weekly to work through some of the sound stuff. And actually, Dan is going to be going ahead and taking over kind of the projection and the sound because they work so tightly together now with live streaming. Um, so he is going to be learning that and kind of facilitating how to give us the best sound quality, the best online presence that we can give. So he's going to go ahead and read those people on the sound team. All right, Carolyn Ruth, you, you got one, yay. Uh, Jesse Gotchall, doing it tonight. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, Maria Frank, uh, Finn, bringing our youth in. Thanks, Finn. Uh, Chris Drew's new to the team, trained, and we're going to hear some awesome stuff from him next time he's up. So stand up, Chris, and myself. Thank you. Excellent. And then the uh, last team we're going to recognize today um, are our circuit check-in team. So we have a little area out there that requires a lot of connections and Wi-Fi. Um, and so the people that do that kind of just greet um, our, our families as they come in, deal with Wi-Fi issues on occasion, right? Um, and so that, I'm just going to announce those. Um, so we have Lauren Dowling, uh, Jennifer Bush, and Amber Heiler, and Amber's unable to be here tonight. So that, so that is go, that is tonight's uh, recognitions. And then, like I said, each uh, week throughout May, we will be recognizing another team. And again, like it's we are so appreciative of everyone's service. Many of you come in um, early on Sundays just to do what you, you do. And we truly, it takes about 30 to 40 people on a Sunday to make this all work. And so um, a mug, uh, a travel mug, it doesn't, isn't doing you justice, but it's what you get, so. <laughs> And um, we will, I don't know if you saw the announcement, but we are going to have a big, the last Sunday of the month, we have five Sundays in May, it's Memorial Day weekend, we are going to do a huge volunteer recognition picnic um, at Ives Run. Everyone's invited, whether you serve or not, it's, that, it's going to be a service and a picnic on a Sunday. Um, and to show our appreciation, that will be a catered event. So no one has to bring a potluck. So it'll be a time just to get together, uh, recognize those efforts, and together um, celebrate uh, what God's doing in the vineyard. So thank you. So that's that. The next thing I, I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and invite Paul and Alicia Alexander to come on up and Mr. Knox. And so. Um, Paul and Alicia have been leading our youth group um, for oh, several years now. Um, they have been doing a great job in that and have 
put many tireless hours into all sorts of youth stuff. And so they have been um, just a real blessing to us. They have, uh, over the last couple of months, really kind of just been seeking the Lord um, and felt like they, that he has led them to the decision maybe to just step back from leading the youth program at this point. Um, they still want to be involved, still want to volunteer, um, just uh, aren't at, the, at this point, at this season anyway, um, lead, going to lead the youth group. And so, um, as I said, just tireless, tireless years of putting in hard work and building relationships with kids and putting message together and all night lock-ins and <laughs> youth events. And, <laughs> and so we just wanted to show kind of our appreciation to them for the years that they have put in. So we have a, a little a gift for you guys. Um, and just we really do appreciate what you've done with the youth group, um, where you've brought it today and, and um, are so thankful for that. And so um, we would like to pray with you guys as well for, for whatever God has next for you. So I, I'm going to invite the youth, if you would, any youth in here, come up and we can uh, just lay hands if it's okay with you. Put your mask on, guys. And we will pray uh, with you. Anyone else that want to just reach your hand out? Um, I know. He's, yeah, he's, it's okay, Knox. We'll make this quick. So, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for um, the Alexanders. We thank you, God, for what you have done through them um, here at the Revolution Youth Program, Lord. We thank you for just the, the number of ways that you have used them to impact uh, the lives of the youth here at the Vineyard, but even in the community, God. And we just pray right now, Lord, um, just your special blessing upon them as, as they take a step back and evaluate Lord, what, what you're calling them into next, God. I pray that you would um, so clearly speak to them that, that they would have uh, no doubts that where you're going, Lord. And I just pray, God, um, that you would continue uh, to just draw them into relationship with you, Lord. I thank you and praise you, uh, God, for, for their involvement uh, with our youth and just ask that you would continue um, to use them to impact lives for your kingdom. In your holy name, God, we praise and thank you. Amen. All right, thank you. Knox, you did great. You did wonderful. All right. Good stuff, guys. Good, good stuff. It's exciting to see... Um, just got at work. Uh, I was sorry to have missed last week's special night of worship, but I've got up to speed on all the stories, and it's just, it's so refreshing to know that, that the God that, that we serve is just actively revealing himself to people. And so, all good. Um, so t tonight we're going to start a new series. Uh, if you have been, have it, even if you haven't spent much time at the vineyard, it won't take you long uh, to realize that we actually have a bunch of very uh, clever little sayings that we use um, to guide ourselves as we kind of live the kingdom life. Um, phrases like, everyone gets to play. Um, I preached about that just a couple of weeks ago, and the idea that, that everyone has a role in the kingdom and is invited to take part in that. Um, other phrases like, come Holy Spirit, uh, the already and the not yet, um, are, are some other ones. And these phrases describe a special and unique component of the vineyard. And so throughout the month of May, uh, we are going to be discussing in detail another one of these phrases. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. John Wimber, the late founder of the Vineyard Movement, popularized this phrase, faith is spelled R-I-S-K, and half a century later, it continues to be as true now as it was when John first spoke it. When John came to faith in Jesus, he was not content to just read about Jesus. 
Uh, he believed that Jesus had come to do something more, that Jesus had come to invite us to do the work of the kingdom alongside him. And as John and others began to study Jesus and tried doing the things that, that tell us about, um, they realized that there was risk involved in doing those things. More than some risk. Lots of risk involved in doing the things that Jesus did. And so this phrase became a reminder in the vineyard that the mystery of faith is expressed in the realities of everyday life. That faith is more than just believing all the right things. Faith is belief in action. And so over the course of the next four weeks, we're going to take a deeper look into this phrase, faith is spelled R-I-S-K, and learn how it can encourage us to take some risks in our faith and lives. Not for risk's sake, but so that we might see God do amazing works both in us and through us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for a time to gather and to, to worship you, Lord. We thank you for uh, just the many um, things that you're doing in the lives of, of people here and elsewhere, God. And, and we just pray that as we begin to discuss what it means to take risks in faith, God, would you, through your Holy Spirit, uh, begin to speak to us, begin to open our hearts and our ears that, that we might see where you may be calling us to take risks. We ask God that you would be present with us now and, and begin that work within us. In your holy name, God, I praise and thank you. Amen. Yeah, so, so when I first heard this phrase, faith is spelled R-I-S-K, I was like, huh? Like, the phrase is so, like, paradoxical, right? Like, faith, the Bible says, is the assurance of what we hope for. Faith is an assurance. It's like our anchor. It's safe and secure. But risk is totally the opposite. Uh, risk, when I think of taking a risk, immediately I get feelings of like uneasiness and, and being uncomfortable and, and a little bit of doubt and a little bit of fear because it's pushing us into an unknown. How many of you have, ex uh, how many of you know that faith though, we uh, can we just start over? requires risk. Anyone know that? Faith requires a level of risk. Many of us are here today believing in Jesus because we took a risk that the gospel was true. When I walked down to that little church and knelt down and prayed for Jesus to save me, I took a risk that what I had just heard was true, that he loved me, that he died for me. I took that risk, and in that risk, I found relationship, and Jesus revealed himself to me and continues to reveal himself to me in, in awesome and amazing ways, but it required a risk. When I worked at the bank um, in our trust department, which was a lot of investing and, and such, you know, we had what we called risk assessments that we would give customers to determine their level of risk. How much how, were, were they willing to risk? Were they risk adverse, meaning, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm safe right here. <laughs> or were they, eh, I'll go all the way, like go big or go home. And so uh, the same is true in our faith. We are ask to take risks sometimes. God 
calls us to take risks. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. And so as, we fo- as you follow along in your bulletin, I've only got two points tonight, uh, and, and they're big points because they're going to set the stage for everything else we talk about. And the first point is that faith is spelled risk is a motto for the kingdom life. So it's a motto for the kingdom life. It's a motto that we can carry along with us on our journey as followers of Jesus. Every week, Sunday to Saturday, from birth to death as kingdom people. When you open the pages of scripture and you read it cover to cover, you will find risk almost on every page. The whole book together, among other things, is a story of risk. This phrase is often used when, when talking about Holy Spirit ministry, right? When, when we feel the urge to go pray for someone and oof, that's a risk, right? Or, or we maybe are praying for someone and, and we get an image and it's like a risk to, do I say that? Or, or sometimes as we're just saying, hey, Lord, speak to, speak to me. And, and then we get a thought and it's like, <gasps> was that the Lord? Like, do I, have, do I have to move now that I asked for this? There's a level of risk involved in that. Um, But throughout Scripture are all sorts of other risks of faith. So as we talk about this series, we're going to talk about Holy Spirit ministry. And going out and and, and being led by the Spirit and praying for people and the risk involved in that. We're also going to talk about those things that God is calling us to, to take risks for him. Because when it comes down to faith in Jesus, I believe throughout Scripture we see him modeling, describing, and teaching all sorts of things about risk. I mean, let's face it. Jesus comes to earth. He picks these 12 guys to be his best friend who he's going to teach the ways of the kingdom to. All sorts of guys, all sorts of backgrounds. And he spends three years with them. And they don't always get it. And at the very end, when he's about to depart and leave what he's built to these people, they deny him, they abandon him. That's risky, right? (laughs) Like, that's a risk that he was trusting in the Father for. Because in human eyes, that doesn't look so good, right? Jesus modeled what it meant to to take risk. He describes and he teaches to the disciples what it means to take risks for the kingdom. The gospel faith Jesus gave us, modeled for us, and distributes through us in our homes, neighborhoods, churches, cities, is real power for real life. And to be a disciple of Jesus is to become his apprentice, learning to do what he did and do it smack in the middle of everyday life as we know it. We're called to take risk. As we start this series and we focus on trying to make this phrase a motto for living a kingdom life, I want to share a story with you from Scripture that Jesus told me which I believe describes a life lived in faith and in risk. So if you open uh, your Bibles or your apps, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 25 today, starting in verse 14. And so it says, Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. 
To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and I went out and I hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this is a little parable, a little story that's told. And, and it is a, f- a famous parable, so there's all sorts of teachings on this, but I want you today to examine this story from the lens of risk. So we have this, this master who has bags of gold, at least eight bags of gold, right? So, um, and he, it wasn't uncommon for masters in that day to leave trusted servants in charge of their property. And they would go on a trip, and and the the property was in charge of the servants. So, So we have this master who's going on this journey, and he's got these three trusted servants, and he leaves them each something according to their abilities. And he goes away, and it says he goes away for a long time. And so we have two servants who immediately, at once, go and get to work. They know that the master has left this property for a reason. They're supposed to put this property to work, this, these bags of gold to work. And it says, at once, they went and put the money to work. But we have this one servant, and it says he was fearful. He was afraid. And so rather than at once going to put his money to work, it says he he buries the money in the ground. Now, a few things we need to point out in this. First of all, whose money is it? Whose money? The master's money, right? Is it the servant's money? Nope. Nope. The master is giving the property authority of the property, but not giving the property, right? So the master is still his money. He has given authority to to these three servants to use his money 
and make his money work for him. Two of them do it at once. They get to work at once. One of them fearfully buries it in the ground. And then the master comes home. And he says to the first one, as they give an account, you gave me five, here's five. I doubled your money. And the second one says, you gave me three, here's three. I doubled your money. And the one who thought he was doing the safe thing by not losing any of the master's money says, here's what you gave me. And the master says, wicked, lazy servant. So how does, what does this mean with risk? Imagine that those bags of gold are opportunities. The master has given them an opportunity to use their gifts and talents to advance his wealth. Jesus has given us all gifts and talents to advance his kingdom. We all have something that he can use to advance his kingdom. The two servants went at once and used what they had to advance the master's property. The one was afraid and didn't. We're called to take risks with the opportunities that Jesus has given us. Whether we have five bags of gold or three bags of gold, we're called to take some risks. And a life lived with the motto of faith is spelled R-I-S-K are the people that go out at once and take the risk. But so many times we, we're like that last servant, Right? We, we don't want to squander what the Lord has given us, and we want to be sure of, of what he's given us. And so we, we don't go at once. We kind of hang back, and we hold on. And, and we say, here's everything you gave me, but nothing additional. There is risk involved in advancing God's kingdom. And like the servants, the first and second servant, they were willing to risk all that the master had given them because they knew that their work was to advance the master's kingdom. Jesus provides for every one of us, an opportunity to advance his kingdom. But we have to be willing to take the risk. We have to be willing to, to say, it's not mine, it's his. And in faith, trust that if we're stewards of his property, he's, he's going to say, well done. Notice how he says, he's not even really concerned. This master isn't really concerned with, with what's brought back to him, right? He's just saying, well done. You advanced my property. And then he says this, come and share in my happiness. Come and share in my happiness. As we take risks for Jesus, as we focus in on, on what God is calling us to do, and we step out of the boat like Carolyn talked about a couple weeks ago, and we take that move of risk, 
We're stepping into opportunities that Jesus is offering us to use us to advance his kingdom. And as that happens, we're sharing in his happiness. And we're told even better, the more that we do that, the more that we're gained. Faith is spelled risk is a motto of the kingdom life. And here's the better news. Faith is spelled risk is a motto of kingdom living that we can develop together. How many, how many are fearful, doubtful when a risk, when God calls you to risk something? Anyone? Or everyone's like, okay, I, I would love to be that person that said, oh, that's a big risk. I'll do it. I'm not that person. Like, my immediate response is kind of fear, a little bit of doubt. Are, are you sure? Like, are you sure, Lord? Anyone do that? You ask for something, and, and you hear it clearly. It couldn't be any more clear. And you're like, are you sure, Lord? I don't know if that's the Lord's voice. <laughs> Give me a sign, Lord. Anyone do that? The best part about living within the motto of faith is spelled R-I-S-K, is that we don't have to do it alone. It's so much better to take risks when we're together. A couple years ago, the Vineyard had another saying, better together. I'm going to play a little video that I found that really, I hope I'm going to play a video. There's no sound to this. So it's a moose, a mother moose and her baby. Mind you of anyone? just about there. Watch how it walks across the road. Look at that. <laughs> now, other than being an adorable little moose, what does that have to do with anything? Many of us, when it comes to risk, are just like that baby moose. We follow till we get to the road. And then something under our feet just doesn't feel right. And so we take a step back and we pout, or we, you can't hear it, but it kind of like calls to its little mother, or its big mother. And you, and you look for other ways around, you see him pace back and forth, and you look for any other way than to walk across the road. Because that is just too scary, too dangerous, too uncomfortable. That's what that moose was doing. But did you see how that mother just would continue to go back and encourage the baby to follow and continue to go back and encourage the baby to follow and so and so. And then eventually, some really... <laughs> dramatic effect. Really awkward steps across the pavement, but it did it. And it didn't do it alone. 
Guys, when we think about advancing the kingdom, it's scary. It's uncomfortable. It can, you can cause some doubt, but we don't do it alone. And we can develop this motto of faith is spelled risk and do it together. So when you're called in to taking a risk, grab someone to come with you. Say, would you pray for me? You don't have to stand at the edge of the road afraid to cross over. There's someone already on the other side waiting, encouraging. Jesus, in, in Mark 6, uh, he sends out, when he sends out uh, the 12 and the 72, um, what did he do? He didn't do it alone. He didn't say, yo, Peter, you go out by yourself and start exercising demons, right? He sent them out two by two, and he said, I've given you authority to take risks and see the kingdom advance. Go together and do that. When he sends out the 72, it says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. You don't have to take risk by yourself. We develop a life of risk-taking for Jesus together. The vision of the Vineyard Church of Wellsboro is to become a community of biblically-based believers committed to worshiping and loving God with all our hearts, mind, and strength. Through loving relationships and led by the Holy Spirit, we will learn together how to become more like Christ and compassionately extend the ministry of Jesus to those around us. We're better together. And we want here at the Vineyard to advance the kingdom of God in our communities and in our schools and in our workplaces. And our mission is that we don't do it alone. I don't go do that. We do it together. But that involves taking risk. So I want you just for a moment, ask God where he might be calling you to take a risk. Maybe he's calling you to, to invite a, a friend that you've been talking to just to come to church. Maybe he's inviting you to pray out loud. Maybe he's calling you to, to literally call a neighbor and ask to pray with them. Maybe you're here tonight and you're not sure who Jesus is, but you have this feeling inside of you that you want to know more. And maybe the risk for you is just talking to Jesus. Where is God calling you to take a risk? And as you reflect on that, if, if, if something comes to mind, write it down. A lot of times we think it and we forget. If we write it down, and since we all put our bulletin on our refrigerator so we can review it every day, right? <laughs> it's there in handwriting that says, God's calling me to take this risk.
And as you're reflecting and as you're writing, I'm going to invite the worship team to come forward. And in a moment, you're going to have an opportunity to receive prayer. And for some, that may be the risk. But as we've been doing, this whole area up here is open. I love what Carolyn said a couple weeks ago. Sometimes physically moving from your seat to a new location stirs up the spirit. And so in a moment, you'll be invited to, to receive prayer on the side or, or come down front and someone will pray with you. But consider what life would look like, what your life would look like if risk were the norm. If you heard God's voice and you just did it, just like that first servant who at once took five bags of gold, a healthy sum of money, and put it all to work. What would life look like if every opportunity that Jesus put before you, you stepped right into it at once? What would our community look like if a bunch of people so in love with Jesus and so in love with the mission of the kingdom advancing, took risks. So Holy Spirit, we invite you to come. We invite you to move in this place. Lord, I myself am not a risk taker. I am not a risk taker. But Lord, Help me to know when to take those risks that you're calling me into. Help us to know as a people how, how to take the risks of faith that you call us to take. Lord, I just pray for the person here right now that's considering taking a risk into relationship with you, God. Would you... Would you show yourself? Lord, help us to make faith is spelled risk. Not just a catchy phrase, Lord, but a motto of our kingdom lives. Come, Holy Spirit. So I'm going to go ahead and invite you to stand. We're going to sing a little bit of this song, and then uh, I'll come back in just a bit, and, and we'll open into ministry time. Yes, 
says, that the Lord is, is leading you to, and, and your, your first response is fear and doubt. And if your first response is, no, that couldn't be me, but not me, I couldn't do that, I don't have what it takes, if that's the voice in your head, I, I'd love for you to come sit down and, and let someone pray with you, because that is not the voice of the Lord. Spirit, would you come? Would you move in this place? Would you uh, reveal yourself to us, God? Would you reveal yourself to us? Would you show us uh, where, where you're calling us to take risks for your kingdom, Lord? Would you even right now, someone's just getting, I should go pray for that person. someone you know to go with you. We're going to take this time and just uh, if you want to sing along with the next song, you can do that or sit quietly pray, you can do that. But uh, If you're feeling that sense that you need, you need to get up out of your chair and, and pray for someone to receive prayer, um, that could be your first uh, step of faith and risk tonight. So Holy Spirit, please move. Please come and have your way in us that we, uh, we would become more like you, Jesus. What have I this life but the
peace is We're going to continue to play and sing um, and, and be open for ministry on the sides. If, if you need prayer, please stay and ask for it. Um, and when you're ready to go, you are dismissed to get your kids and have a wonderful week. Stop and get a donut on the way out if you didn't. If there's any left, I don't know. Before we go, I would re someone uh, pointed out to me, and I should share that it is the wedding anniversary of Pastor Brett and Lori. So we want to congratulate them and thank them. They're just such a blessing to us. So wish them a happy anniversary on your way out. And, uh, and we'll continue to play for just to finish this song.